Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mumkey and Cobb Movie Podcast. I'm your host, Mumkey, and today we are discussing Fifty Shades Darker. Oh, wait, no, this is the wrong envelope. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, we're really discussing... It's Moonlight, guys. It's actually Moonlight. <laughs> yep. Hey, I'm here with my, my old buddy, Cobb. Say hello, Cobb. Hi, guys. Oh, wait. Actually, wait. It's not Cobb. Actually, it's Erich. Oh, no, I have the wrong envelope. This Again. isn't Cobb at all. Who is this? Those damn accountants. God damn it. So this is Erich. Yes. Howdy. So, funny story, everybody. Uh, speaking of colossal fuck-ups, <laughs> uh, Erich and I had a colossal fuck-up. You might be thinking, oh, on the last episode of this podcast was a Monkey and Cobb discussing uh, Fist Fight. And you'd be right. It's but that's the not the last episode... That's not the last episode we've recorded. <laughs> oh, no. About three days before the Oscars, we recorded a full, what, like hour and a half long Almost, episode. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Discussing our Oscar predictions and somehow, some way, and maybe this will happen again. One of our recordings got fucked up so that no matter what I did, it was unsynced. Uh, so it just didn't work. So we had to scrap the entire episode. Great episode, by the way. I gave the show an official theme song. Mm -hmm. Uh, me and Everidge had an argument about why Zootopia was better than Kubo and the Two Strings. And as the Oscars proved, I was right because Zootopia won. So Everidge, go fuck you. yourself. You, fuck you. Well, I, your anti-furry agenda was once, once again defeated by the power of, of Harry Love. Yiff and hell. <laughs> Oh, I'll lift, I'll lift all my way down to the bottom of Dante's Inferno, my friend. Uh, God damn it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we had our Oscar predictions, and uh, I, I don't remember what all, all of our predictions were, but I'm, I'm guessing I probably won by, like, 100 points or something. So I got them let's, all let's, right, and no one nope, let's just anything let, else. Let, let, let's just say I was right. I think I put Jackie but, uh, for something, and that won nothing. So. so, So real quick, while we're here, before we talk about today's movie a cure for wellness which we both saw over a week ago and yes. just haven't gotten around to recording uh is there anything you want to say to reflect on the oscar ceremony that is now kind of old news yeah yeah so i mean like i think overall it was a decent enough ceremony jimmy kimmel did a all right job i mean like it's kind of a thankless task hosting the oscars but i think he did a decent the part in job. the middle when they had like all the the, the people poor from the black bus. people from chicago come in yeah. and like and just say blatantly racist things about the white actors mm -hmm. and, like, awkwardly kiss everybody on the hand. I think that bit went on for a little bit too long. And I, I actually, I don't know if you saw this, I was live t tweeting the entire Oscars. I did. And then I thought that they were over, so I went to go take a shit, and that's when, like, the, the Moonlight the La La Land happened. fiasco happened. Yeah. So I missed it because I was taking a shit, and it, yeah. was, it was one of the worst <laughs> moments of my entire life. That's incredible. <laughs> but what did you want to talk about? Okay, so basically, we've got some real upsets, in my opinion. Uh, La La Land won for cinematography. Fucking bullshit. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we went into detail about how bad the cinematography was, specifically yeah. with the opening scene, where they, they shot it actually on the streets of L.A., so the sun was always in a bad spot, and half, mm -hmm. the, half of the opening scene looked not very good. It looks almost overexposed at times, but it's just like... Silence was only nominated for one fucking category, and it loses that one yeah. fucking category. Silence got robbed, and it was the most beautiful looking <sighs> movie of the year. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Uh, what else? Uh, it was the cure for wellness of 2016. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. The okay, most beautiful so movie of the year. Both you and I were very happy to see Casey Affleck take, uh, oh, take the fuck best actor yeah. Oscar. And uh, Mahershala Ali got Best Supporting Actor, which I, I was pretty happy about overall. I think we both picked him in our Oscar pregame show. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of rooting for Michael Shannon or uh, mm, Jeff Bridges, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, so yeah, maybe. Mahershala just did a great job. And I actually learned how to say his name now, so I'm not oh, saying good. Mahershala what, or whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter. That episode's never going out to anybody, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, we got best song was won by some fucking bullshit La La Land that wasn't fucking Moana. God damn it. No, when they were... Because they always perform all the songs during yeah. the ceremony. Yeah. And I thought that the Moana song was fucking boring and gay. I really like the, the <sighs> piano, the, the catchy piano of that La La Land song that won. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm okay with that winning. That's a pretty good song. No, John Legend actually made that song worth... A damn otherwise it wasn't and it just kind of made you realize 
if an actual musician performs these songs, it, they're all of a sudden decent. Uh, I don't know. I, I think when Emma Stone performed Audition, it it struck something in That's me more not, than well, when John Legend did it. Monkey? Well, yeah, but I'm still talking about his performance. That's not the best original song. Well, sure. But the only reason why I like the song in the first place is because of the piano, so it doesn't really matter who's playing it. Yeah, that's true. That, that was, City of Stars was the only one that I came out of there recognizably humming in any way. Do, 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 do. Yep. Uh, I was really happy that Zootopia won because, uh, a, as I will tell you, uh, Kubo and the Two Strings is a very shallow film with nice animation, blah, 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 whereas blah, 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 Zootopia blah, 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 has as deep uh, societal uh, uh, discussions and, and ideas, and it's a critique of the, the race. It, and it, it does a great job of, of proving once and for all that the carnivores in society, the vicious, dangerous ones, are actually the minorities. So I'm really appreciative of, wow, of Zootopia yeah, yeah. For, for articulating that point. There is that. Uh, anything else about the Oscars before we move on? Not much, no. I just think K- Kubo should have taken it uh, in that category. Although I would have liked Fuck to see Kubo. Moana. Kubo is gay as hell. Fuck. <laughs> so, what's the main topic today, Yurich? What what movie are we talking about? Fifty Shades of Grey, I think, is what my envelope says. A little says. movie called The Amazing Spider-Man 2, starring oh, Dane cause... DeHaan. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Yurich. Yeah. I am literally a retarded 70-year-old man. So when I open up the wrong envelope, I'm not going to say, hey, this is the wrong envelope. I'm just going to have my partner read it because I'm fucking retarded. I mean, so, I, feel, I feel bad for Warren Beatty in that situation just because just he was trying. Just fucking say it's the wrong envelope, you stupid old man. He was it's trying to say to her, this is wrong. What do we do? Because you can't throw a fucking fit in the middle of the just Academy Just say it to Awards. the audience. Just say, hey, hey, the stage crew fucked up. Where's the right yeah, envelope? Yeah. I, I think there's no perfect way to handle that situation, basically. No, I think the perfect way is saying, hey, this is the wrong envelope. Like, that's all, right, all you got to do. Right. <laughs> all Excuse I'm saying me. is I, I don't know who Warren Beatty is. I'm sure he's a legend in Hollywood, yes, but I, Monkey Jones, think he's a fucking retarded old man. <laughs> yeah, go watch Bonnie and Clyde, dude. <laughs> okay, so so as I was saying, I'm a retarded old man. My Isn't envelope the says this day. episode is about Fifty Shades of Grey. What, did, yes. what is the movie actually that we watched? Laters, baby. <laughs> Winky, smiley face. Yeah, so we what? watched Cure. That, that's from... Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, okay. <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> Me neither. Um, okay, so a cure for wellness. A cure oh, yeah. for wellness. Try to talk uh, like sh- Dane DeHaan the entire time. Shutter Island 2. Shutter My Island. <laughs> a Shutter cure Island for Shutter Island. <laughs> Shutter Island 2. This time, Leo is younger and has every opportunity to leave, but he decides not to for no reason. Dane DeHaan does look a little bit like leo doesn't he and he's he's giving very much a leo, leo in shutter island performance i can't yeah, remember what the, yeah his character's name was like teddy or something i don't remember teddy sears probably no i don't i don't think that was it <laughs> it was teddy roosevelt yeah obviously that's who you're thinking of bully old boy i am leo dicaprio okay f- first and foremost i think we need to establish the dichotomy that has naturally arisen here yeah in that one of us thought that this movie was great, and one of us thought that this movie was shit. And, uh, Wait, what? Go- Isn't that right? It is. <laughs> I don't know how you know that. <laughs> because I, I think I think you texted me after you saw it, and you said that was complete shit. I didn't. I was trying to keep my thoughts secret. Oh, Holy well, shit, you, sp- you, you weren't very you good at it. You spoiled this entire experience for me, Monkey. So good real Lord. quick, before, before we dive in, I want to introduce yeah. a new segment to this podcast. Uh, my buddy Digibro, he listens to this once in a while. I don't know how often. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said that we should do a segment where we argue about whether or not a movie is Kino. Ooh, because evidently ooh. we haven't embraced the Kino meme enough. Ooh, I like that. So real quick, I, I want to explain what Kino is. Yes. There is a hierarchy of film. You've got flicks, which is the bottom of the barrel. It's like chick flicks, you know, like just really shallow, disgusting stuff a that women movie. would appreciate. Yeah. Then above flicks, you've got a movie. Uh, what would be an example of like a movie? Mm, the Great Wall. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got like The Great Wall. Then above that, 
<laughs> you have film, which yeah. is something like uh, The Dark Knight. That's a film, sure. Yes. Then you have cinema. Now we're getting really high up there. That's stuff like... Uh, Lolita or... Uh, sure. Mm, mm, another Stanley Kubrick movie. I can't remember. It's one of the early Stanley Kubrick movie, movies. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey is yeah. cinema. Yeah, yeah. Stuff that's too deep for you. Eyes wide shut. But, too deep for you. <laughs> and then above cinema, you have the top of the heap. The best of the best. If, if something is considered this, it is the best thing in that category. Absolutely. Motherfucking Kino, baby. Oh, yeah. And, th- and there's them. any number of Kino categories. There's Cape Kino, mm-hmm. so like the the very best uh, 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 superhero movie, aka like your your Captain America's Sil- or, um, uh, Winter, Soldiers. Winter Soldiers. That would be yeah. that'd be Cape Kino, for example. Mm-hmm. You've got um, you've got Raping Your Son Kino, aka a Serbian film, <laughs> stuff like that. So there's all sorts <laughs> of Kinos. So I yeah. think. I think the conceit of this episode, Erich, should be if we should argue whether or not uh, a cure for wellness is Kino. What do you say? Um, mm, no, I would say not Kino. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna ha- I'm have to disagree. I-, I I say this movie is definitely Kino. But okay, please explain yourself. Well, first of all, it's it's one of the most beautifully shot movies I've ever seen. Every single frame of this film, and would you agree with me on this at least, that it's just a beautiful movie, shot in a beautiful way with beautiful scenery. I'm using beautiful a lot, but I can't yes. stress enough how... I will, I will give this movie Every two frame things. of this movie I could see as a portrait hanging up on the wall of a yeah. museum. Yeah, I will give this movie two things. Cinematography slash camera placement and acting. It's That's kind of similar all. to Batman versus Superman in that regard, where every frame looks beautiful, but maybe the movie itself isn't that phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, so the movie, it, it's Kino, because it's it's very much like Shutter Island, which is I also consider to be Kino. I consider mm-hmm. that to be um, trapped on an island Kino myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has Dead almost the same Kino. plot as that. Only this movie is half an hour longer, but... But the key difference, and we'll get into spoilers later, because the spoilers of this movie are the, are the the crux of my argument. Okay. The last 30 minutes of this movie make up for any possible fault that you nope. could find in the movie, nope. and nope. it nope. made it worth it for nope. me tenfold. Nope. So go ahead and, and explain why you think it's not Kino. This movie, even though it might be beautiful, even though there might be some decent performances, even though it might have some slightly icky kind of shocks in it. It's boring as hell, dude. Most of this movie is Dane DeHaan walking around in places he should not be able to walk around. (laughs) And then he does not do any investigating for himself. People tell him stuff. That's all this movie is. And if you look at this from like the screenplay perspective of what is actually happening What is the character actually finding out? It is him being told the same kind of shit over and over again with slight variations again and again, finding the same goddamn information until it comes to a conclusion in one of the most ridiculous, over-the-top, crazy things. Nope, nope, wrong. And not in a good way. Crazy in a bad way. No, 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 no. You don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. Okay. Dane DeHaan's not crazy. You're the crazy one. Okay, so, please, Monkey. It's the best ending of Clarify any for movie. Me. Real quick, walk me through Dane DeHaan as a character. So you are in this crazy fucking Swiss Alps uh, place for the elderly. And you go no, into No, 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 it's not for the elderly. It's, the, it's for those who are seeking the cure. Everyone there is old, though. Because only old people want the cure. Yeah, all right. Okay, so you go there. The first Not the thing girl. You the girl's see, pretty young. Yeah. The first thing you see when you go there are eels in the fucking gates. All sure. right. Established. Then eels are very important. It makes sense. I don't know what your problem with that is. Get into the place and you start drinking the water. Fine. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. But the first thing that happens after you drink that glass of water <laughs> is there uh-huh. is a tiny baby eel in the yep. water. Yep. What is stopping you from leaving that place? Are you telling me you've never um, had a drink of water that had like a bug in it? That's, it was what, not what, a bug. It was explicitly not a bug. 
it, it was a very little tiny molecule sized living organism no, that was inside his water. Smaller. Maybe they this just... was visible. This was on, on the visible spectrum monkey. Uh, you know, you know, <laughs> molecules, a, visible spectrum. It's all smush it between his fingers. Are you telling me if you found like like a little slug inside your water, you would just leave the restaurant immediately? You'd be like, uh, "No, sir, you fucked up my water." If you like, saw you know, eels, I can understand why him as a Ugh. character who just traveled across the world to retrieve a man who was going to save his his company. I can see why he wouldn't immediately leave because he found a fucking bug in his glass of water. This I mean, guy, come on, he just no, no, he just spent we, we know three days overworked. traveling to get here. We know this guy's overworked. He has better things to do than this. He would leave and say, send somebody fucking else to do it. That place is creepy as hell. I'm no out way, of no here. No way. No, no, no. You don't understand the character because he's a sleazeball who will do whatever it takes to succeed in the business world. That's why he's he's like a millionaire at the age of, what, 25? Because he cheated with the accounts. And now that he's being blackmailed by his company to do this thing that will in turn save the company from being fucking exposed and everybody would go under so he has a lot of pressure on his shoulders to find this guy who went to this who went to the alps to get the cure or whatever the fuck he has a lot of pressure to find this guy and bring him home if not just to, to stop himself from being blackmailed but also to save the company that is making him a millionaire so i can understand with complete uh, clarity why he would not leave because he finds a bug in the water are you kidding me okay. are we really here okay. to discuss the All little right. tiny right. plot details right. that we don't like or should we talk next, about the movie as a whole next fucking question he always takes everyone's fucking word for everything he hears they tell sure. him oh we called them and we told them and they said fine he never attempts to get into contact with those people he does he does he just can't find a phone and he also can't find a ride down the mountain he do, they, I, they do eventually get down the mountain yeah. into that town, and and that's one of my problems with the movie. And he doesn't. I, I'm not. I'm not going to pretend that I don't have problems. There are a few distinct issues I have with the film, and that's okay. We'll get into that later. But, but what, go ahead. what do? You, how do you counter the fact that it's just him walking around places and scary things fucking happen to him? He has absolutely no uh, relevance to the plot. Things just happen because to him. it's a mystery movie where. The, the switch is that the main character isn't a detective, so he's not there to investigate. He, he's, he's uncovering the truth of where he is almost by but accident. why is he he's doing not, it then? Wh- why is he, why why is he, is doing he investigating what? anything? I don't know. I mean, it's just human curiosity. <laughs> you know, he, he's walking. The I think, first, I think the first time he realizes that something's a little off is when he, he's walking through the steam bath. And then he f- he walks into part of the steam bath where all the walls are Disappear. surrounding him, and the and the doorway disappears. At that point, I'd be like, "Hmm, something's a, a little weird is going on here. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna think I'm gonna figure this out real and quick." And I'd be like, "I'm getting the fuck out of here. The walls fucking disappeared." If your biggest issue with the film is that you're a coward and that the character is not, I implore you to take no, back no. your non kino stance on this film, Here's good the thing. sir. Here's the thing. A, a movie like Shutter Island has a baked-in reason for him to stay on that island and a baked-in sure. reason for him to be led around places. This movie does not have that. I think the issue we're having here is that if anybody listening has not seen this movie... They, They're confused as hell. We're getting too specific here. Yeah. I think we, we should talk about the movie kind of as a whole and then yeah. go into some of the bigger issues we have because we're kind of... All right. Kind of just picking out little plot details that we don't like, mm-hmm. and that's not going to tell anybody if they should go see this or not. The proof of the pudding is in the tasting, monkey. If the <laughs> entire if if I can pick up little nits, it's not Kino. That's the thing. Listen, the whole the. <laughs> I was agreeing with you as I watched this movie. I thought, wow, this is a weaker version of Shutter Island. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have no idea why the character doesn't just go home. At one point, he goes he goes down the mountain, and he's like in a little town, and there's a phone available, and he like he has every opportunity to go to go home, but yeah. he decides not to, and he goes back up. So, I mean, I, I, he, I was he obviously this... gets recaptured. Is basically the well, explanation. Yeah, but he had he had ample time to leave if he wanted to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But. But what I'm saying is, I was on the same page as you up until the last 30 minutes of the movie, okay, and okay. then it, it really sold me. Before we talk about the last me. 30 minutes of the movie, can I ask you something <laughs> about yeah, go the movie? Ahead. Was his yes. leg ever broken? See, that, we don't know. It's very okay. ambiguous. Here's the deal. Th- th- Here's the deal. A. Well, not A. I'm sorry. I'll just establish this. 
I broke my leg a couple, like a year and a half ago. Okay. If you broke your leg, you'd know it. So if his mm-hmm. leg was not broken, but was in a cast, he would know just from moving it around or just for, I mean, it's possibly it was sore from the crash or whatever. So, but yeah, so we know. should explain when he first goes to this place to yeah. retrieve the businessman and it's like, it's like an, a place for old people who are trying to find the cure. Um, yeah. And he, he finds out the bus- that the, the visiting hours aren't until tomorrow. So he yeah. tries to leave, gets in a car crash, breaks his leg, and then he's in like a hospital wing of the place. So he's like kind of trapped there, but not really. Yeah. So I am this point about his leg will segue into the ending because it's right before the ending that this happens. Okay, so the entire movie, or most of the movie, he is walking around on crutches, which, I mean, I know I'm a big guy and it's harder for me to move around than a lot of people, but you can't fucking move around that much on crutches in a fucking bathhouse that easily. <laughs> He's in a fight on crutches at one point in this movie. It's ridiculous. So, if his leg is not broken, you'd know your leg's not broken. And if it is broken, it healed in a ridiculous amount of time so that when he eventually cuts off his cast and takes his leg out, he's able to walk on it again. This movie is fucking dumb, monkey. No. No, you're wrong. Okay. And I'll explain why. Okay. So, so there's a lot of ambiguity about whether because there's there's a lot of different possibilities in this movie. Possibility one, uh, Dane DeHaan was always crazy, kind of like in Shutter Island. Spoiler alert: he was always crazy. All this shit. We've got insane. the end of the movie. We can talk about, I guess. Yeah. With Possibility that. two, he's never crazy. Everything that happens to him has a logical explanation. Uh, number three, he is a sane man, but when he drinks the water that's full of little tiny eels and shit. It, it makes him go crazy and hallucinate and experience things that he shouldn't, especially after, uh, spoiler alert again, we're going to go into spoilers uh, from here on out, when when they hook him up to the machine and, and mm-hmm. it's like this, it's one of the scariest things I've ever seen in a movie. And this movie, that's another reason why I like it. It shows things that actually scare me. It doesn't have these fucking gay ass jump scares and shit. It, it shows you scenarios like being trapped inside um, a vat of water where the door is locked and you can't get out or the scariest thing I've ever seen, being forced to have a tube stuck down your mouth, down your throat, and eels forced into your body. After that point... Oh, and uh, the other scariest scene, and what I'm about to bring up, is when he's strapped and forced into a dentist chair, and the guy just fucking drills a hole through his tooth, and and you see everything. And it's... I I, I was the only person in the theater, but even if I wasn't, (laughs) I swear to God, I screamed out loud when the drill went into his tooth. Yeah, like I, I was because that's just oh, I was like, ah! it was certainly a wince moment for me. This movie was but not scary, monkey. No, no. The scenarios that he was forced into. I guess I'm I'm a claustrophobic kind of guy because when I see somebody s- strapped down and forced to have like a drill through your tooth and you see it all in in perfect detail, that's a little scary for me. I don't like to see that. Yeah, I uh, even hate stuff with teeth. Like when, whenever anybody loses their teeth in this movie, it just gives me the creeps. But yeah, this movie is not scary overall. And uh, I, I've I've tried to suck enough dicks to know that I have a bit of a gag reflex. Mm. So to see a pipe forced down somebody's throat, also I don't like, especially when eels are being forced into their body. But back to your point about the leg, you're asking, oh, yeah. oh, was yeah. his leg actually broken or not? But let me remind you that in that dentist scene, he gets his tooth literally drilled out of his face. Yeah. And then in the final scene of the movie, when he's riding the bike down the mountain... He has a full face of teeth. Did you notice that? I did not. Yeah, he, so he's missing his tooth for like an hour of the movie, and then in the last, the last like uh, 10 minutes, all of a sudden all his teeth are back. I mean, so that makes you wonder how much so of this many... was in his head and how much of this is actually happening. This movie has so many weird like time gaps, I think, like where, like, I don't know, you'd think that he'd, be there for quite a while if he like he never mentions the fact that his leg is broken and how long is this going to take and because I mean, like if your leg's broken and there's no way to get down from the mountain other than whatever car service there is one of the first things you'd say is how can I get out of here right uh sure he never does that Okay, so you're you're basically arguing that a lot of the things that we saw in this movie are not necessarily true. I, I think it's so open ended in that How much? The, the, it's the movie too is so crazy then. 
No, the movie it's, it's is so crazy, especially in the last 20 minutes, that when it ends, you start to think none of this makes sense, and maybe there's an interpretation where it does. But as far as I know, none of this makes sense, and I don't know what actually happened, what was in his head, or what's happening. But in the end, I, as a viewer, and I can't speak for anybody else, I, I just don't care. I, mm-hmm. I like it when an ending is so ambiguous and crazy that I can't help but think about it the whole time. I'd rather have that experience than see a movie that is so straightforward that once I walk out of the theater, I never have to think about it again because I understand every single plot element. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? But if so much of the movie is delusion, what is the actual point of the delusion then? It's an entertaining fever dream that is beautifully shot and and it has an ending that is so crazy that I didn't think it would be legal to show, let alone in a wide release movie that is in theaters right now. Okay. I, I, I don't would... even I, I wouldn't think that this would be legal to show, and that's why I love it so much because it's so fucking insane at the end. It's wait, just wait, it's what, utter what part madness. It's not legal to show. So, do you want me to talk about it? Yeah. So I'm I'm <laughs> the girl has not undergone puberty yet because she she's she's secretly two hundred years old, but her body hasn't aged. So and when, when Which, we first can met you her, explain I, that to me? How she is so young? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so according to the plot of the movie, the old people who were there um, looking for the cure, the cure is actually immortality, and that they're using these old people to stick the eels into their body, and that makes like a life nectar um, come out of the old people, so it makes the old people like dehydrated and really weak, and like their teeth fall out and their skin turns all um, gray and shit. But then all the all the bad guys, or I guess like the the people who run the establishment, they use eyedroppers to eat this light or to drink this life nectar and that allows them to live forever so that's why the the main doctor guy and the girl are like both over 200 years old did you this, did you catch all that no when you watched sense, the movie monkey. this makes absolutely no sense because if he really wanted to fuck his daughter or whatever oh spoilers would, dude that's the best part of the movie why wouldn't he just in the 1800s or 1900s or whatever wait until she's 14 or 15 or whatever the fuck and then do it and then start giving her the shit listen like i said what this what? movie doesn't this movie doesn't, doesn't give you sense. all the answers and i'm okay with that we don't know why the girl isn't undergoing puberty we don't know why going into the water like the eel water forces her to have her first menstruation we don't know we don't know why he is waiting for this to fuck her we, we don't know all i know is that he it wants to fuck his daughter, and then he and then he starts raping his daughter, and then um, Dane DeHaan makes his face melt off, and then he hits him with a shovel, it's dumb. and it's crazy and it's hilarious, dumb. and it's amazing. It's, it's awful. It's, uh, are you telling me you don't like schlock? I, I don't. Have, I'm not saying no, 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 this no, no. isn't a masterpiece. It's it, not like a beautiful um, was, movie. It's not. It's not a fucking. Uh, it's. It's not a. It's it's no Pulp Fiction or whatever the f- whatever fancy pretentious movie you like. <laughs> this is schlock Kino, and that's why I say it's no, Kino. It was the bad. Not only it, it was the bad. It's not it's not a B movie uh, schlock. This is a movie schlock. No, this is the schlock no, no. that you see in the theater. It was the bad kind of schlock. As soon as he hit his head with the shovel, and there was CGI face. If this movie tried more accurately to be like a hammer horror type movie. Which is like low budget horror where you're just kind of really trying to get cheap scares out of the audience and you have like these great actors in the roles. Uh, you'd have him hit him with the f- shovel and then it would be like practical effect. It would be like makeup and shit. Now, this movie's lazy. It's CGI. Fucking bullshit. This movie's lazy. A movie yeah. that I would argue has the cinematography level of silence you're saying is lazy? Are you fucking kidding me? No, I would not say it is cinematography. Uh, oh my god, the scene when it, exactly. whenever you see the mountainscape, it, it's it's just it's jaw dropping. It's beautiful. pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, yeah. But that's the location doing most of the work then. So, man. Okay, so let's let's talk about some of these points then. So, sure. if this movie had ended twenty minutes before the end of the movie with him and her sitting on the bench together. Uh, kind of like beaten. I'd oh yeah, be that's fine. another problem I have. Is that this movie? I'd be better. The movie it. has four endings. Yeah, and this yeah. movie is so fucking long, dude. 
It's not Kino. It, it, it was kind of like, uh, no, it's, it's schlock Kino. You didn't hear me. It, it's like the, the Return of the King where every time you think it's going to end, a new scene starts. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? Uh, it, there's like four fake endings and then the it just Return keeps going. Return of the going. King had, had earned that. There had been two other movies by uh, which we had grown know. to love these characters. And then by the end of it, you, you deserve those endings. This movie just keeps fucking going. Oh, no, I, no I'm agreeing with you. I, okay, I think that so, the fake endings are annoying and bad. Okay, so the other thing is his his fucking people are having their celebration or whatever at the end of the movie because he can finally fuck his daughter. I guess that's why they're, that's why they're yeah. celebrating. And then yeah, the, the fire that, starts, that he can fuck okay, his daughter. Okay, it's wait, great. The fire that starts underground, right? Sure. Somehow spreads above ground. Because the emperors go up through the fence. All and that, the problems and that are just building like little, lights on fire. All the problems with the movie everyone, are plot nitpicks, dude. Everyone, everyone in the building forgets how to leave the building. So? <laughs> it's dumb. It's yeah, not even schlock. The, you know, of, the definition of schlock is dumb, crazy shit happening. And it, it's like so dumb that it makes you laugh and you like it. No, but it's boring. That's the problem. I was you rolling were bored when he was trying to movie. rape his 14-year-old daughter? Yeah, because I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming since halfway through the movie. Because they I, I don't know. blatantly tell you everything. There's a lot of hints, but I, I did not guess it was going so far in that direction that they would actually show it all on screen. I thought surely Dane DeHaan would solve the mystery and stop it from happening. But no, we see this, this 50-year-old guy <laughs> raping what looks like a, a 15 or 16-year-old girl, and we see her tits, and I was like, yeah, titties, The baby. woman's oh. like 24 or 25, right? That's Mia Shia Goff. LaBeouf's wife. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. super old, even though she's yeah. she looks like she's 12 or 13. Yeah, no, so... No, no, no. I, 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 I wouldn't go that far. When, when Dane DeHaan first meets her, I thought they were the same age. Mm-mm. Okay. But then when, okay. when we got to the, uh, the menstrual thing, I was like, oh, maybe she's a little younger. <laughs> Okay, so Mark, I still thought she was hot as fuck. Explain this to me. Okay. What are the themes of this movie? Um, there's some, there's uh, some like uh, uh, minor stuff near the beginning about being overworked and what is all for that kind of stuff, but none of that kind of suggested kind of ideas actually plays into the end of the movie or the middle of the movie or any part of the movie really. See, it's, I, I think it's, this it's is lazy. It's fucking lazy. This is the main problem, I think, between both of our understandings of the movie, is that when you start throwing around academic words like themes, I, I think you missed the point. <laughs> the no, movie's but, not but the meant movie to... suggests it. It, it. It's not. I don't think it's meant to teach you a lesson. The and movie if it starts is... with the guy killing himself while he's talking, or somebody else is talking about how much time you put in and how people are overworked. And Dane DeHaan's dad kills himself when uh, what uh, their stocks fall or something. Like yeah, but we don't know if that actually happened. The beginning of this movie, they suggest things that never get delivered on or played on throughout the rest of it. It's lazy. The screenplay is awful. And my counter to that would be, I don't care. <laughs> I, if the movie was entertaining to me, and if if certain scenes give me a large emotional impact. And I walked out of the movie smiling, thinking, holy shit, what in the fuck did I just watch? And overall, my experience was positive. I don't need the movie to be perfect for it to be schlock kino. I just, I, I think we're just, we're looking for different things, E. Rich. I think you're looking no, no, for no. A, okay. a plot that makes sense and characters that are full. But, but when I watch a movie like this, I just want it to be crazy and funny. Monkey, I can buy your argument if this movie is an hour and a half long, uh, has more out there performances than what it does because both jason isaacs and dane dehan are quite sedate in this movie they're doing a good job but it's not like they're like playing for the back aisles or something this is not schlock kino it's pretending to be fancy it's pretending to be higher class than it is it's trying to be shutter island and it's just not i agree that it's shutter island light but the juxtaposition of beautiful cinematography with insane schlock that you would expect to find like in a VHS store at the very back, like covered in dust, just combining great um, filmmaking with a retarded, crazy plot that doesn't make sense. And you really think about like, wait, what happened? 
I think that's a unique experience. And and this is this isn't a remake. This isn't um, a sequel. This is a unique movie that needs to be supported because otherwise, if if you don't support a movie like this, Hollywood is going to keep churning out the remakes and the sequels. So I feel even more inclined to like it just because even though it's kind of Shutter Islandy and kind of like The Shining, it is an original movie, and I, I appreciate it just for that alone as well. And I, I, I'd argue that this was the ultimate curse of putting <laughs> your faith in original movies, because <laughs> if you, you say that original movies will be better or good in, in any way, and then f- f- from my point of view, you walk into a cure for wellness, you're going to be very angry <laughs> with uh, kind of the state of how things are. So Unless I, you think uh, incest rape is amazing and funny, I then you'll like really that's like the, the movie. Only like the reason I you like this movie, um, <laughs> yeah, other than how well it's shot and the up until the ending, it was a five out of ten for me, and then the ending <laughs> pushed it up to an eight out of ten. Oh I'm not gonna God. lie. I the reason why I think every person needs to see this movie is for the shock value of the ending and for them to go, "What in the fuck is happening?" But the point, and then, I, and then to I, think. I, I, I think what I'm trying to say is, like, if you've seen, mu- not many, but a decent amount of movies like this before, you know what's going to happen. Like, to me, it's both boring, except for the kind of, like, scare moments that they put in there. It's kind of boring. It's rote. I've seen it all before. I guessed the ending an hour into it, and there was still an hour and 20 minutes left. That's the problem. If the movie doesn't stay ahead of the audience, or at least me... It falls behind, and then I am ahead of everything else, and the movie's just dragging along. This movie's way too long to justify its own length. No, yeah, I agree completely. I think the movie, the main problems are the movie's too long, the main character not choosing to leave. He has <laughs> ample opportunity to leave. He never yeah. does. That was kind of frustrating as an audience member because I was thinking, get the fuck out of there, you stupid idiot. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the movie's too long. It has too many fake endings. Where, like, mm. there's, like, a part where he's writing a letter, and you think, oh, yeah, the movie starts off with a letter, it'll end with a letter, like, a n- good bookend. No, it goes on for another 20 minutes after that. And I'd say, like, here, here's the thing. I'd say that this, the ending of this movie is some kind of, like, studio-mandated, you need to put some big, grandiose ending on it. But, like, they set everything else up. They set this ending up. So I can't really say that this was, like, some kind of crazy change that they made to the movie. Because I, I feel like if the movie had ended 20 minutes before... I'd overall be better off with the movie even if I wasn't, like, ecstatic about it. But by the time so it goes th- crazy, th- it hasn't built up with enough kind of evidence or with enough good stuff for me to, like, justify how crazy it goes, in my mind at least. Hmm. So I, I think just the main difference in our point of view is that I love the ending and think it's just insane possibly illegal because it's portraying an underage girl getting raped and we see her tits um that's and not then you have like that's not that's, what that's not that's nothing that hasn't been in movies before dude well sure but like um like it, it, if you're writing um like this a fan fiction movie. or something you're, you're not supposed to include sexualized characters who are under 18 like on mm. and, and on things like that for example so that's why i was kind of like whoa that's crazy lolita of one course, of the most famous books in the world is about wanting to fuck an underage girl yeah but you don't see her tits do you in the movie no i'm not sure i haven't watched the yeah movie. I, don't, I don't think you see her lolita's tits in the movie mm-hmm. she's a 12 year old girl but yeah, it just the main difference <laughs> is that I thought that the ending was exhilarating and, and hilarious mm-hmm. and fun, and he in the bad guy turns into um, Skullface from Captain America. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, great. the Red Skull. And and you just thought that the movie, the ending was over the top in a bad way, mm-hmm. and and that the movie didn't earn it, and that it was too long, which I also agree yeah. with. You were laughing with the movie and having a rollicking good time. I was laughing at the movie and falling asleep. No, I think Not I might really have been laughing asleep. at the movie too. It, it really. might be because you think that they were trying to include like these deep themes about um, work ethic in America. No, they did. And <laughs> it was yeah, so, it's just not they, delivered. But the thing is, if they failed on that point, which I would agree, because I don't think I learned anything in that regard either. Mm-hmm. This is kind of like the room where it doesn't matter what the filmmaker's intention was, <laughs> because the final product is so funny and entertaining mm-hmm. that it's it's worth it in the end for me. So yeah. if this is uh, the room's ver- like if Shutter Island and the room mixed together, mm-hmm. and that's this, I would say that's schlock kino for sure. But this is uh, I, to me, this doesn't have enough of the room in it to make it really good schlock. Mm. Is the problem like the performances are not 
wide enough to really like because if if the room was really well performed would we be talking about the room no no we wouldn't that's that's my point here it doesn't pass the bar for schlock and it doesn't pass the bar for kino hmm. okay well <laughs> I, I think we'll have to leave this one up to the audience so yeah, please go go discuss in the comments if you're still here after 40 minutes yeah right. do you think do you think based off of our arguments it doesn't matter if you've seen the movie or not based off of our arguments do you think that a cure for wellness is is kino or is not kino yeah <laughs> and then, there you go that'll be uh, that'll be the point of this kino. episode yeah, yeah. Okay, to so can we really not to quick talk about that ending because yeah go I, ahead okay because i felt it well was... clearly since you didn't notice that his teeth were all back yeah. you didn't understand the ending but it's possible they just put it, his teeth back in or they put no, that, new teeth, that never happened porcelain teeth no that didn't happen but it's possible it happened off screen dude he was knocked no. out for so much of this movie mm, no i refuse to so believe he, it i think he i think it's the same thing have... as his broken leg what his his Wait, what? His leg was never broken his, his and his tooth teeth missing were never this... taken out? Yeah, we don't know. We, we don't so know. We real? don't know if he if he thought it happened or not. We don't what know. What was real then? We don't know. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> it's a crazy fever dream. I, we're talking in circles. Just, uh, what's your last point? <laughs> this is exasperating. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> wrapping up here. Uh, Cure for Wellness is really well shot. Gore Verbinski knows where to place a camera. There's a part in the beginning where it, there, the camera's on the outside of the train while it goes through a tunnel, and the basically the outside is reflected on the, the side of the train. And so it's a really cool shot. Uh, he knows how to place cameras. He knows That's in the how trailer, make, make so you can beautiful. go see that in the trailer. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So the movie looks beautiful. I really like Dean DeHaan, so that really helped me through this movie. I just think he's compelling in general. Uh, God damn it, what's his name? I, I, I swear I said it. The Jason Isaacs, that's his name. Uh, he played Malfoy in the Harry Potter movies. Uh, he's wonderful as the villain. Wait, who but the he fuck just doesn't have he? enough to do. Jason Malfoy's Isaacs. Malfoy's in this movie? Yeah, yeah. Who did Malfoy play? The main doctor guy who wants to fuck his daughter. What? The dad. That wasn't dad Malfoy. Malfoy. Oh, the dad, dad Malfoy. Malfoy. Okay, that makes yeah, more yeah, sense. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what the fuck are you oh, talking sorry, about? If, if I was saying Draco, I meant Lucius. Uh. Yeah, Lucius Malfoy. Yeah, Lucius Malfoy. Sorry I was so that. confused for a second there. Yeah, because you're like, I didn't see what's his face anywhere. Tom Felton. No, yeah, I did <laughs> not see whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah. So most movies would be able to get away with what this movie gets away with if they had even a slightly better script, <laughs> screenplay. This movie does not. This movie is an hour and a half of Dane DeHaan walking through corridors and asking dumb questions and having no actual impact on <laughs> anything going on whatsoever. <laughs> Most of the movie is people explaining things to Dane DeHaan. The fucking woman who's doing puzzles and shit throughout. Like, is she real? I don't fucking know. It, it, I, I can wonder about all this shit the entire time. And the fact that I'm, I'm curious in any way maybe speaks better to this movie than I'm giving it credit for. But it's kind of a... A puzzle with no answer or at least no answer that i care for it's boring to me there's only like two or three good really good scares that had me on edge uh throughout the movie it's just too long and uh i don't think it really uh justifies its screen time so i would say don't watch this movie in the theaters i'd say rent it uh on red box if you really want to see it or wait until it comes on netflix or something so there you go sorry independent movies are shit Watch more Keith <laughs> Uh No, I, I have a lot of the same uh, quibbles with the movie that you did. Mm-hmm. It, uh, we, we've said it a hundred times. It's too long. Too many fake endings. The, the character is frustrating at times. But I, I still have to say it's... I mean, we've already spoiled the whole thing, so... Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Just say whatever. <laughs> n- like, now that I've spoiled the whole movie, maybe there isn't a reason to see it. Mm, but... Mm. Uh, but... If you're going into it blind, I'd say it's it's definitely worth at least one watch for the last twenty minutes alone. It's it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't I can't tell people not to see it. Like if you're curious, I would say uh, invest in your curiosity and check out mm-hmm. this movie because maybe Interesting. maybe you'll you'll bizarrely like it. And I, I have a feeling mm-hmm. that twenty years down the road. This is going to be one of those <laughs> cult classics that people 
that people start watching and paying attention to. Yeah. Okay. Monkey, do you want to know the twist ending to this episode? Sure. I had already listened to a podcast where they talked about this movie. So going into it, I vaguely, like, I didn't know all of it and I didn't understand any of it because it's very indecipherable. But mm-hmm. I had already known a lot of the plot details about the eels and it being about eternal life. Most of the podcast was just them talking about how it's very obvious in the movie as it plays out. But mm. I'd already heard a lot of that stuff. And so like as batshit and crazy as that is listening to it, I was interested to see how the movie laid that out to me. Cause I, I generally don't have problems with spoilers. Like if, if somebody spoils something for me, I'm just like, okay, fine. I'll be interested to see how the movie does that. But I went into this movie vaguely. I just knew that eels were somehow a key to immortality. <laughs> so, and that was batshit enough that I was like, oh, all right, I'll see how this plays out. And guess what? <laughs> I have no fucking idea how that works. <laughs> so I think that the, the moral of this story is that if the movie movie has been spoiled for you, then it's not mm-hmm. worth seeing, which mm-hmm. also means every single person listening to this shouldn't see it because we just spoiled the whole thing. <laughs> we ruined the movie. We fucked you over, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, th- I think that brings us to the end. We're, we're going over time, and I didn't yeah. ask Twitter for a question, so I think we should oh, wrap damn. it up. All right. So do we? So I guess we both did a recommendation. So I think we're done. So Monkey yeah. says, uh, <laughs> "Check this out if you want." Eurid says, "Yeah, maybe not." Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if three point five out of ten says Eurid. Actually, wait a minute. I don't want to say eh. I want to say fuck this movie. Oh, it's boring. I would say this movie is better than Kubo and the Two String. Oh my god! It's like you're <laughs> trying to piss me off. <laughs> I will not rise to this bait. <laughs> Erich, thanks for joining me again. Uh, uh, what are we gonna watch next, Logan? I hope so. I think I'm, I'm seeing Logan tomorrow with my dad, so we'll probably okay. have to do this uh, pretty soon. I'm gonna see hey. if I can see it in IMAX tomorrow. We'll, oh we'll shit! See. This is supposed to be Cape Kino, like hardcore yes, Cape Kino, like actual Cape Kino. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I'm not excited. Even fucking joking. Yeah. So I guess I'll see you next time for the Logan review. You rich. Thanks for joining me and discussing whether or not a cure for wellness is Kino. I think I, we had a lot of fun tonight and we'll see what the audience thinks. Sounds good. And in the words of Dane DeHaan, I'm not fucking crazy. I'm not fucking crazy. (laughs) Good night, everybody.